Hi, my name is James Belton. I work in IBM's Watson and Cloud Services team as an adoption leader. And what I'm going to do in this uh, this tutorial is create a Bluemix object storage service, um, and then show you how to use it using the Bluemix user interface. So, first thing you obviously need is an IBM Bluemix account. So, if you don't already have one, then if you go to console.bluemix.net, um, you'll see this screen, and uh, you can then click to create a free account. So if you just enter your, your details and sign up, um, you'll be able to access the service. Okay, so once you actually have your, your account sorted out, if you then navigate to the, um, to, to the catalogue, you'll see this screen here. Um, I happen to know that the, um, the object storage service that I'm interested in is under storage. So I click there, and there we go, there's my object storage service. So if you click on that, I can then create the service. <clears throat> okay, so what I'm going to do is, uh, is give it a service name. I can keep the default if I want to, uh, but all I'm actually going to do is uh, create a new name for it, just so that I can uh, distinguish it from other things that I've been doing. Uh, the only other thing that I need to do is give it a pricing plan or indicate which pricing plan that I want. So there's a standard plan which gives me a 5 gigabyte free allowance um, and there's a fr uh, and after that um, I, I then pay um, per gigabyte for any extra storage that I use. Or I can have a free tier account uh, which gives me um, just a, a free 5 gigabyte limit. Um, I'm going to stick with the standard account and all I then do is click create and uh, my service has been created and it's now um, being provisioned. So typically the service takes a minute or so to provision. So uh, we're now going to our services dashboard um, and you can see that it's actually already provisioned for me. So that, that, was, uh, that was nice and quick. So if I click on there, I'm just bring the screen up and uh, we can then see our service that we've created. So, as you can see, I've, um, I've actually created this in the London region. Um, this object storage service is actually available in London or it's available in Dallas and I can, uh, I can actually switch between the two. Uh, I'm gonna stick with London for now. Uh, and on here, you can see that at the moment, Basically, my, my object storage is, is empty, so I've got no containers, got no files, and I've got, I obviously haven't used any storage yet. So the other me menu items here, so I've got service credentials. Um, so if I actually want to control this via the Swift API, then um, I can do so, but and what I'll need to do is create some new credentials, but I'm not going to do that for now. Um, the plan menu item shows me, um, again, the, the, the plan that I'm currently on, so I'm on the standard plan. I can switch to the free plan if I wish, and obviously if I'm in, uh, using the free plan and I, I want to actually exceed the five gigabit limit, gigabyte limit and go to a, a, a paid plan, then I can do that as well. Um, and then the connections uh, menu just shows me what apps and services I've actually connected to this service, and, and I haven't actually connected any at the moment, so there's, there's nothing being shown there. So if you go back to the manage screen, so the first thing we need to do is actually add a container. So if you think of a container as being a folder in which you want to actually then store your, your objects, um, so, so it's like a, a folder in any normal sort of file system that you might see. So um, so if we click on add container or create container, um, what I'm gonna do is store some documents that I've, I've written for Thoughts on Cloud. So I'm gonna call this my Thoughts on Cloud files. And uh, I'm gonna save that. And there you go, you can see that that's then uh, that's been created. So if I click on there, uh, what I then need to do is, is actually add files. So as I say, you can do this through the user interface. Um, so I'm gonna click add, so I can either click add files here or I, or I can click uh, add files from this menu as well. And then what I get is a, uh, a pop-up box. So what I can then do is uh, click the files that I want. So I'll click the two here, uh, click open. And there you can see there's two files being uploaded. And there they are, they're both, they're both there now. The other thing that I can do if I want to, so I can, if I want to add another file, um, I can actually drag and drop here as well. So um, here we go, 
So just dragging that down there. And there you go, you can see that that's now uploading as well. I'll just cancel that. So you can see that's uploading. So that's actually a slightly larger file. So it's just taking a little, little while longer to upload. So we'll just let that chug along. One thing that you can't actually do using this screen that I found um, is um, you can't actually add folders. So if I try and drag that down, um, you see there I actually get an, an error trying to upload that. Now you can actually upload entire folders using the Swift API, but as I say, we'll, we'll cover that in another video. So there you go. So now we've actually got three folders there. So you can see that I've now got one container, got three files in there, and you can see that I've used three megabytes of storage. So I can then do things with these particular files in the sense that I can uh, you know, open and download them. So for instance, I want to look at this file, this file um, then, I can, uh, then I can download the file. So there we go, so it's a Word file, so it's going to open, open with that. So we just let that download, and there we go, it's open. So there's my, uh, there's, there's my file. So close that down again. Um, so what else can we do with those? We can delete files. Um, and I can delete the container. So if I want to delete a file, then um, it gives me a warning. If I'm going to delete it, or permanently remove it. So I can click delete. And there we go, it's gone. Okay, it's been so telling me that I've deleted it. Okay, so um, that's a pretty simple run through. I hope that's been, been useful. Um, and uh, see you in the next video.